Hi, this is Mike Family DIY TV, and today I'm in my new kitchen. Well, not new, kind of work in progress. And today we're doing plumbing. Okay, in this video, we're gonna go over the process of adding all the plumbing for a brand new sink. We got this. This is a big farmhouse sink. Uh, this has already been installed. If you wanna see a video on how to actually do the carpentry work to install this, I made a video for that. Check it out. We're also gonna be hooking up this dishwasher. Uh -huh. So this is gonna be a combination of hooking up a dishwasher, garbage disposal, sink, sink drain, electrical, everything that is needed to make this a functioning kitchen sink. Let's get into it. So to make this video very DIY friendly, we're gonna be using PEX. So let's talk about how to set up your dishwasher real quick. You need a dishwasher, you need a drain line. This usually comes with the dishwasher and you need to make it easy, a dishwasher setup kit. This comes with the 90 you need and the line. For our garbage disposal, we need somewhere to plug it in and a switch. So we bought two electrical boxes and we bought this P-trap, okay? So what I would suggest is you take this, this comes with the actual unit to the store and just make sure that it fits into the plumbing that you got, okay? Okay, the next thing we need, we have this out of here. We're gonna be connecting into the drain line with this contraption here. This accepts the one and a half inch line, okay? And then can up converts it to a two inch line, okay? So that's what you need. This is the two inch line. We are also gonna be using an air admittance valve so it's something like this. This will actually be kind of mounted up here. And what this will do, this will replace the need for an actual drain that usually goes out through the roof. So I would suggest check your local code and see if this is acceptable. But for an island, this is what I'm doing. Don't forget your escutcheon plates. And last but not least for our supplies, I bought these straight valves. This will be one valve per fixture, okay? Two for the hot. I need one valve to shut off the water to the dishwasher if I ever wanted to service the dishwasher. Then I need another valve that'll shut off the faucet and I need a cold valve that'll also go to the faucet, okay? So now we got everything. We think we got everything. What I would suggest if you're going plumbing, what do I say? Always buy more than you need. Buy some couplers if you're working with two inch. If you're working with inch and a half, buy some couplers. You can always return them or just keep them for a later project. They're real cheap. It's a lot cheaper than going in your car and driving back to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever store you use and picking up a couple more pieces, all right? That dollar piece could really, really make or break your project. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself some reference lines. This will tell me how much room I have back here to work with. Okay. Five and a quarter. Okay, so we're gonna transfer those lines down below. So I'm gonna start with the drain side. The reason why I'm starting with the drain side is because it's a bigger pipe and it's harder to run, okay? So I'm gonna work for, I'm gonna do the drain, supply lines, and then electrical. I'm basically working my way down from the biggest to the smallest, okay? So now what I'm doing is I am finding out where are all my studs below this. I'm running all my plumbing down. So I have a, I have a floor joist right here and I know I'm, I have a floor joist around here. I can see a nail. So this is all open. So I'm gonna attempt to keep my plumbing over here. We're gonna see if that'll work. Okay, so now I removed the sink. I got the sink out of the way uh, because I was able to figure out that this is exactly where I want my stack, okay? Um, after lining it up, it'll work perfectly like that. It'll actually be on a little bit of an angle. So now I need to pull bore a two inch line. I'm gonna go two and a quarter inch line through here and into the basement. Use this drill bit to drill through the base and then into the floor. This will give me a pilot hole in the base and it'll give me a pilot hole in the floor. So I can drill down in the base, up through the floor, and I'll have a two and a half inch hole where the pipe can fit through. Holes drilled, now we're gonna establish our slope. So we're gonna connect into this two inch line here with a elbow, okay? So what we did is we measured from here to here with the level line and we measured to the bottom of the pipe. That gave us three inches. So then we came over here and we measured over. It's a four foot span, okay? We need to drop a quarter inch per foot. So that gives us a one inch drop from here to where we connect in here, okay? So then what I did is I came over here, I measured up four inches from the bottom here, all right? And then I met, went down a quarter inch, quarter inch eventually to here where it'll be at three inches, okay? I'm gonna notch these holes bigger than the two inches. I'm probably gonna use a reciprocating saw and kind of do a square just to give myself a little leeway. But where that line is, that should be the bottom of the pipe. So I'm not gonna go any lower than that, okay? We're gonna get cutting. All right, so here's my first oversight. And I do this a lot, I don't know why. For some reason, I'm like, I'm just gonna run it through all the studs. How am I gonna get a two inch line 
from there all the way to here. It's not gonna fit, it's not bendable or anything like that. So that's why this kind of takes me back into the beginning of the video when I say, if you're working with two inch line, buy some couplers. You never know what you're gonna run into. Guess what I bought? I bought a coupler. I didn't think I was gonna need this. Figured I'd just return it or keep it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it in here and see how the longest I can go in. I'm gonna cut it there. And then I think I'll be able to basically put a union in somewhere in here. That'll keep my pipes up in the ceiling for when I finally finish this basement. Just started years ago, but I didn't do the ceiling because I knew we were doing all this plumbing and we were redoing this kitchen. So that's why the the basement's halfway done because I knew I was ripping the ceiling down. All right, so how do we cut this two inch pipe? You have either you can use a reciprocating saw or you can actually pick up one of these cutters. I picked one of these up a while ago. It cuts up, cuts up the two inch pipe. It's basically just a big cutter. I really enjoy this. Okay, so this is what we're working with. This is now set a quarter inch. Uh, that slope looks pretty good. If anything, I actually think it's a little too sloped, so I may actually raise this side up a little bit. So now I got a pipe running up there. Let's go upstairs, see what we're working with. Now with the sink back in, now I'm gonna establish where I wanna cut this line. And I kind of made a mark on the wall where I think I want it. So it looks like anywhere, yeah, if I come in right around here. So now I'm gonna cut this and start putting this all together. So we knew this was our center. We can line that up here, right? And we can mark where we need to cut this. This one needs to be cut, cut right there. Now that we have the drain all figured out, at least we have the holes cut. Now I'm gonna work on the actual supply side. The reason why I'm gonna work on the supply side is I don't wanna start cutting these drains open and having an open drain in the house. I don't wanna smell that. So uh, now, um, now that I know where the drain is gonna be, that's kind of like set. Now I know I can put all my water lines over here and I have a free space to do that. All right, so we're gonna get to putting the water lines in and connecting in the dishwasher. To run the drain line and the electrical line, we need to drill a hole. Now we're gonna draw our holes for our two water lines for our cold and hot and cold. I'm gonna put the hot on the left side because that's where my dishwasher is. If my dishwasher is on the right side, I put the, right, the, the hot on the right side. I really don't care what side it's on down here. I'm actually gonna use color-coded pecs so you'll see, you'll be able to know which one's hot, which one's cold. And this block is here for attaching the valves to. So the valves will be up here, here, and one will be right here. So now we're just gonna drill the holes all right, so we are going to do the cold side first. That is on the left side. So we're gonna come off of this one, loop around and then pop up. And we're gonna pop up, ball some blue pipe, pipe up with blue, blue means cold. All right, so this is where we are. We have the hot water line tied in, running up. We have the cold water line looped and running up there as well. So now we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna start working on all of the plumbing up there. All right, so now we're gonna pipe in the hot water. We're gonna have two valves. One valve that's gonna go straight up for the, for the faucet and another one over here that's going to go to the dishwasher. And we're gonna insert that with a T. So now we're gonna hook up the dishwasher. So what we gotta do here, we can make this easier by taking the dishwasher out, laying on its back, but it's really not that hard. So we're just gonna got, we gotta just connect and then connect this, this to the, to the elbow. I've actually seen this connected directly to that before, but I like the idea of having this elbow. It makes it less like kinky. All right, I'm wrong. We need to put it on its back. All right, now we are. Now that the water line is connected, we're gonna pick it up, put it in, put the water line through there, and we're gonna connect it in right here. I'm gonna need some help for this one. Okay, 
Okay, now we're gonna hook up the drain. All right, so let's install this. So it's actually pretty straightforward. You have this collar, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some plumber's putty. We don't need a lot of this stuff because it's gonna all squish out. I've also seen people use silicone for this as well, which I've done also in the past. All right, so we'll put plumber's putty like that. Make sure this is clean. So from the bottom, this fiber ring, we're gonna put this plate, this, and then this ring. This is the trickiest part. I start gluing anything I want to just dry fit all of this for one last time all right and that's what I'm looking at okay and what I'm making sure is that when this is all hooked up that this is still gonna be going downhill which you can see it is if we had to adjust it we can actually cut this this can't go up any further I could just cut this little black pipe here which will force this up a little bit and give me a little bit of room which would make this angle down but I think I'm good now I'm gonna start gluing this all together all right so now let's finish this drain up. This is the piece coming out of your, your P-trap, right? That needs to connect into here. Obviously not gonna work. So we need to find some adapters. So the first adapter we have is two inches to one and a half. So that fits inside there like that. And then we got this one. This is a compression fitting. This fits inside here, goes from one and a half to this, okay? This is a normal stuff that you normally see under a sink. So this actually slips in here, tighten this up, and then you have your nice seal. So we're gonna get gluing, and we're gonna glue all this together out here. A lot easier than doing it in there. set up here with the main drain. Put this on first, put this. Put this in there. Tighten this. Uh -huh. Now we're gonna hook up the dishwasher uh -huh. to the garbage spoon. tonight we have our drain hooked up we have our dishwasher hooked up we have all of our lines run i'm not going to install this i can't install the faucet yet because i don't have a countertop all right so it's the next day all the plumbing is in actually tested it uh with this water line what we're going to do is we are going to work on the electrical so the dishwasher is going to be on its own circuit that's going to be a gcfi i actually going to um, use this GCFI. We're going to mount a box back here and run it up from the basement. So I already have the line run up from the basement and we're going to install an outlet right here. That is a dedicated circuit. Okay. The next one we actually have to run from another circuit and I have a GCFI outlet over, over here. And then I have this going into the basement and I'm going to run this up across the ceiling in the basement and pop up and probably install it right about here. All right, so we are wired up. Uh, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check this. So we have this checker here and it's also test a GFI. So if I plug this in here, 
You can see it's off. I'll turn it on, reset it, click the button. And that's how we test the GCFI. So everything is wired up, it's good. Now we're ready to plug the appliance in. All right, now it is actually running. I'm just running it on rinse mode just at first, just to make sure that all the plumbing is working and I don't have any leaks. And as far as I can tell, I don't have any leaks so far. So we're gonna let this run and see how it goes. Now we're at the point where we need to add power for the garbage disposal. Okay, so this is a standard plug. So what we're gonna do is we have this uh, double gang metal box, okay, knocked out the bottom. And I need to, I'm gonna mount it in here like this run PVC to it, of course, so that the, the cord is not exposed. What I do is I, to get through here and into the basement, and just so I know where I am in the basement so I can drill up, I use this bit here, this real small bit. I drill all the way through, and now I drilled my three-quarter hole. Now I'm gonna go in the basement, drill up, then I can run my lines up. All right, so let's finish this out. Today we got our countertop. So now we can install our faucet and finish the installation of our dishwasher and wrap some other things up. So let's get into it's it. It's actually a very simple install. We only got two, two hoses to install here and we have these three rings. So the way this is gonna work, we're gonna put this through the countertop. This is gonna sit on the countertop like this. We are gonna feed this through. And we can pretend this little hose here is the countertop. It's gonna go like this. Once we get this up to here, we're then just gonna run these screws in from the bottom. And that's really gonna pull this all together. And the unit is pretty much installed. Then we just have to screw this to the hot and cold. All right, now we need to flush the lines before we put anything to this aerator. So now what I'm doing is just unscrewing this. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna clean up this drain pipe for the dishwasher. The manufacturer recommends a high loop. So what does that mean? Basically what they want is this piece to exit there and go up as high as it can behind here and then back down. Okay, so this needs to be all the way up there. Now what that does is that causes pressure to empty the water out inside here. So it actually clean the pipe out. And also it forces the water back down this way and puts pressure against the sub pump that's in here and keeps like the gates and all that closed. Okay, that will avoid any kind of smells or any kind of like food getting stuck back in there. Cause what happens is the food will fall back down, right? Then when the sump turns back on, it'll push it back up, okay, and out of there. You keep it like this, you'll basically, if you keep it all wound up like this and not with a high loop, you can really run into issues. Not like a year, maybe not two, maybe like four or five years down the road. So they really recommend a high loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to mount something like this as high up in there as I could. Okay, up inside the, up here, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of these ties, all right? And I'm gonna cut a little piece of this hose here and I'm gonna run this through this. And then this will basically, this is what will be touching this hose, okay? I don't wanna just use these because I think if I use these, it'll be fine for probably three or four years, but I feel like after a couple years of it, maybe going across this and moving just a little bit every single time, it could wear a hole in it. So I wanna soften that up a little bit by using something like this. So let's get into it. Now we're gonna mount the dishwasher and not in that way. Get your mind out of the gutter. Now we're gonna, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to use these clips. All right, so um, you put the clips on like this, you bend them, you drop them.
Now what we're doing is we're checking that this is level. So we just put it on here. We're checking our reveals. So we want this to be flush with the cabinets. Um, so yours may be different. That's what we're going for. And the other thing we're doing is we're checking it level back and forth, okay? The way we're doing that is we're checking it along the face here, okay? So if it's unlevel, what you do is there's feet under here. It's pretty self-explanatory. You basically run these feet in and out as you need. There's one here, one here, and one in the back. Okay, so for a total of three. All right, now that they're level, we're gonna lock it in place with these screws and we gotta run them in these little screw, little holes down here. And what this is gonna do is lock it, lock it in place. So now we are going to mount this to the cabinet. So we're gonna drill a little bit of a pilot hole. And what we're looking for is just this little bracket in here. I'm not sure if you can get in there and see that. All right. And what we're gonna do is carefully run our screw in. So that is the video. Um, that was basically just a walkthrough of how to install a sink, a garbage disposal, and a dishwasher, and a faucet, and the electrical for a sink in a spot where a sink never existed before, okay? So we had to cut into the main drain, had to do all that stuff. So if you made it this far, I wanna thank you. I'm gonna ask you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. The one last thing I wanna leave you with is a little bit of a tip, and I'll put a link to my Amazon store down below. But I put these little contraptions underneath all of my water fixtures in the house. So that'd be a sink, that'd be a water heater, that'd be a condensate pump. Anything that has water in it has one of, one of these sensors at it. And what I do is I take a little bit of toilet paper, one sheet, and I shove it in there. And what I do is I just throw it underneath whatever that contraption is. And if this is to sense water, this will go off. And it's very, very loud. I recommend you guys pick one of these up, especially if you're doing DIY plumbing. You know, we don't do this stuff every day as DIYers, so we do make mistakes. Um, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. This is about a month later, or maybe two months actually. You can see the kitchen looks a lot different. We haven't had any issues with any plumbing. The only thing we had an issue with is we actually had to replace the faucet. Don't want to get into that. We'll get into another video. But again, actually talking about other videos, we do have everything we've done so far documented, filmed, and we will be putting videos out on how to do all of this, okay? So if you're into that thing again, I please would ask you to hit that subscribe button. But I'm Mike, Family DIY TV. Leave me a comment down below, and I'm out.